Okay, welcome back to the next in our series of videos here, Introduction to the IDF to PH Tools. Um, I'm Ed May with Building Type, and glad you can uh, uh, join us for this uh, next in our, uh, installment here. Um, we're going to pick up right where we left off with our um, parameter assignment discussion. We were, we were just starting to talk about how we can manage the um, parameter data for all the different surfaces in our, in our model, um, and we were starting to see how we can use some of the new IDF to PH tools to grab some information from the Rhino scene and use it to shape our Grasshopper model um, and uh, therefore our PHPP model as well. Um, we were looking uh, initially at how we can we can do things like name our surfaces and then use the get surface params component to sort of pull or harvest that data out of the, the Rhino scene there. Of course we can get a lot more data out of the Rhino scene as well. Um, now I also showed that you know of course all of this parameter assignment can be done in the in the grasshopper scene you know there's no um, rule that you have to do it in the in the rhino scene it's really sort of personal preference or how you want to work with the your file um, you know I, I prefer to do a lot of my uh, parameter assignment in the Rhino scene, but um, you know certainly I could imagine if you were doing, if you were going to like test a thousand options or something, you would want to you know manage that input in the Grasshopper side uh, in, in that case. So you know there there are cases I could imagine where you might do it the other way. So so certainly different um, ways that you could choose to work with these tools. Um, they're flexible enough to allow you to sort of do whatever work however however you like. Um, but um, for purposes of argument and, and to show my own workflow, I'm going to show how we do a lot of the parameter assignment and hosting in the Rhino scene. Um, but but do of course know that you know everything we're doing can of course be done in the Grasshopper scene as well if you prefer that to work that way. Um, so let's let's continue on. So we were pulling the we were successfully pulling the names out of our our Rhino geometry. So I, I took a minute and, and sort of named all the geometry in our our Rhino scene. So I have a name. Wall two, there's wall two, and wall two is getting harvested here, or it's getting pulled into our grasshopper scene by this new get surface params component. So the get surface params component is reaching back into the grass into the rhino scene, grabbing a bunch of data, and then using it to create those honeybee surfaces. Right, so it gets used in line in front of the honeybee surfaces component. They're sort of a pair. They sort of travel together in the IDF to pH workflow. So okay, so that's fine. So we can definitely pull in the geometry. We can pull in the name. Um, what else can we pull in? What other information can we pull from the Rhino scene? And what other information might be useful? Well, first of all, let's take a look at these the next two um, outputs here. So we have a get surface types and a surface energy plus boundary condition output as well. So let's take a look at what type of outputs we're getting there. So surface types, everything's a zero. So that's not very helpful. And our boundary conditions, everything is outdoors. So these are just some defaults. What does type zero indicate? Well, if we look over on the honeybee surfaces component and we hover over the surface types, we see that it uses this coding scheme where a, a zero is a wall, um, one is a roof, two is a floor, three is a ceiling, etc. Right, so it's a sort of um, numeric coding scheme to, to sort of encode what type of surface it is. So for some reason, our get surface params thinks everything is a wall, and it thinks everything is exposed to the outdoor air. Uh, and that's just because that's what it chooses by default. If we don't give it any information, if we don't give it any data, then it's just going to assign by default. It's going to say, OK, well, everything's a wall, and everything's exposed to the outdoor air. So there's a couple of ways that we can manage that. If we have a really simple scene, like the one that we see here, we can use our auto orientation. So we can use the auto orientation function here um, to uh, try and figure out what's a roof, what's a wall, what's a floor. If I set that to true, notice that some of my surfaces now change to one, which is, what's one? We'll sort of hover over here. One is a roof. And two, two, if I hover over here again, two is a floor. So it can, it's smart enough to figure out what's a floor, what's a roof, and what's a wall. Can't figure out any more than that. Can't figure out if it's a you know, slab on grade floor. But it's at least smart enough to know roof, wall, floor. So OK, if it's a really simple scene, we can just use our auto assigner here. Um, but that's not going to be super helpful. Um, probably we're going to have a more complicated scene. We're going to want to manage the information in a more detailed fashion. So this is where the next of our Rhino side assignment tools is going to come into play. So we've already seen how we can use the Rhino side assignment tools to assign room data information to surfaces. We can set a name and a room number and fresh air flow rates and some other information uh, for 
floor surfaces, we can do the same thing for our exterior surfaces, not with room information, but with the relevant surface types, etc. So let me select a surface. Let's select the roof. So I'm going to select the roof surface here. Go to shaded so it's a little more obvious. So I'm going to select the roof surface. And in order to assign a type, I need to somehow set the type here on the object parameter. So if we take a look at the object parameters, I have a name field, but I don't really I don't have a type field anywhere. There's nowhere here that I have a, a type field, and I certainly don't have an energy plus boundary condition field. That's not that's not a that's not anything. I don't see that anywhere on my sort of object parameters here. So we have to set up some custom object parameters. And there's a couple different ways that we can do that. The way that uh, works best is to come up here to the Set Surface Parameters tool. So again, in the PHPP toolbar, just like we have our Set Room Data tool, we have a Set Surface Parameters tool. So if I select a surface and then I click that tool, I'll get a little uh, dialog window that'll come up and it'll ask me to input some information. So for first of all, I can give it a new name. And then I can set the surface type. So notice here I get a list of surface types, which is going to match my surface types over here. Right? If I was to hover over this surface type, I see the same list of information. So here's a roof. So maybe I set it to roof. And then my EPBC, my energy plus boundary condition, can be set to ground. Adiabatic, so no heat flow, uh, you know, up against a neighbor or something like that, or an internal surface, or outdoor air. So a roof is going to be exposed to outdoor air, etc. Now, we'll come back to this select assembly. We don't have any assemblies in our drop-down list here. This is for construction assemblies, uh, and we'll come back to that in future videos. Uh, for, for now, we'll just focus on these types. So I'm going to set this as a roof type, and I'm going to set the uh, energy plus boundary condition to outdoors. I'll say OK. And notice over here that once this flows through and updates, now I get a assignment, a type number one, and outdoors. So uh, if I bring up my names, I think surface number one will be our roof. Yep. So the roof, remember, these are all in the same order. So roof is type number one. What's type number one? Come over here. Type number one is a roof, right? because we just assigned it as a roof. The rest are all still coming in as walls because we haven't set anything. Let me clean this up a little bit. Uh, because we haven't set anything, and as soon as we set something, they'll get updated. So for instance, let's set the floor. Let me uh, kind of rotate to the bottom, grab our floor slab. And we'll do the same thing. I'll come up here to my Set Surface Parameters uh, dialog. I'll open up the dialog. I'll leave the name. I'm going to set the surface type to a floor. And in particular, let's set it to something like a slab on grade. Let's say this is a very specific type of floor. It's a slab on grade foundation. And its boundary condition is not outdoors. It's not exposed to the outdoor air. It is, in fact, exposed to the ground. So as soon as I input ground and say OK, and if I now update all of these elements, you'll notice that this now gets a code of 2.5, and it uses ground as its boundary condition. This is for the floor. If I come in here and hover over surface type, notice 2.5. Well, 2.5 is a slab on grade. So I, this component, this get surface params component, is able to pull a lot of information out of the Rhino scene if that information has been applied to the various surfaces in the scene. And if it's not, it just applies a default. It gives a, a coding of a wall and an outdoor boundary condition. Now, where is this information? If you're interested, where is this information? How is this information being hosted in the Rhino scene? Well, if I click on the surface, we have our standard options here under the properties, so the standard object properties. But we also, in Rhino 6, have this thing called attribute user text. And the attribute user text is a custom dictionary, which a uh, key value dictionary, which can be applied to any object in Rhino. So any object in Rhino, in the newer version of Rhino, Rhino 6 or better, now allows us to host this kind of data on the geometry or on any object in the, in the Rhino scene. And so for instance here, you can see that we now have some keys and some values. This information has been created by this set surface parameters component. If I was to go click on a wall that I have not used this component on yet, notice my key value pairs are empty. I have no information here. 
So this information only shows up once I use this set surface params. So for instance, I'll come in here and I'll say this is a wall and it's exposed to the outdoor air. Say OK and notice this now dictionary now gets populated with all the various information. Now I do not have to set this information through this component. Right? I could come into this wall and I could add a new field and I could call this uh, surface type and give it a value of, well, what were my available values? I don't really remember. I think maybe it was, um, I don't know, uh, 2.25 or something, uh, right? So this is the trouble with trying to do this manually, is it's hard to remember the sort of exact naming and sort of what the codes are. So, you know, this this um, tool is here just to make life a little bit easier, um, just to give you the kind of, um, you know, easier interface, as it were, and a consistent styling. So notice here, I spelled surface type wrong. Uh, or surface type wrong. Um, so, and I gave it the wrong code. I'm supposed to give it a text code, not a numeric code. So, you know, it's hard to do this manually and remember it every time. So I'm going to delete this one. That was a sort of mistake. Um, and I'm going to let everything get set automatically using this interface uh, sort of dialog window here. Uh, and, and of course, if uh, all this updates, um, you know, no, nothing will change here because these are all walls with type zero and outdoors already. So, okay, so we're pulling a bunch of useful information out of the Rhino scene. Right? So all of that information, I should also know all that information stays with the surface. So that information will travel with the surface, no matter what you do to the surface. Uh, but if you delete the surface, that information goes away. You'd have to reapply parameters to the new surface, whatever you sort of build in its place. Just keep that in mind. Um, so, okay, so what are we going to do with this? How does this information make its way into the PHPP? Let me delete these guys here. We'll notice that we have surface types and surface types. Boundary conditions, boundary conditions. Constructions, constructions. Radiance materials, radiance materials. So the way that these components are set up is that the outputs are going to feed right into the inputs. So if I connect my types and I connect my boundary conditions, now this information is going to flow through into my PHPP properly. Right? So this PHPP is now getting set, is getting managed by all this information. And we can tell that, for instance, right now all of my walls are exposed to ambient air. But let's say one of these walls is below grade. Maybe this is like a walkout, you know, it's a ranch house or something built into, the, built into a slope. So let's say that it's a subgrade wall, so it's still a wall, but it's going to be exposed to the ground, not to the outdoor air. So as soon as I do that and I pass this through to the update here, notice now our group type changes. So this is our group type. Our group type changes to nine, and I have an external wall to ground rather than to ambient air. So all of these assignments get done here in the Rhino side tool. Uh, and again, this is almost this is really just personal preference. I like to manage all this information in my Rhino side tool and then have it get um, sort of read directly and then passed through to my uh, Grasshopper scene, um, my Energy Plus tool, and uh, the PHPP. But of course, you could set all of this manually inside of the Grasshopper tool if you like. Um, you know, this uh, again, sort of personal preference. However, you want to work with these things. So hopefully that all makes sense. We now have control over all of our names, all of our types, all of our boundary conditions. We can sort of set up the geometry of the exterior shell of our building. So in the next video, we'll come back and we'll start to talk about constructions. I think uh, we have a lot to say about constructions and materials. And we'll start to talk about U values and we'll figure out how we can start to apply the right constructions to the right surfaces here, start to combat that really terrible um, specific heat demand uh, value that we were seeing in our PHPP. So I think we'll cut this one off here and um, I will see you back in the, the next video.